Hello, welcome to Quok Talk. I'm Crystal this Tuesday morning. Let me just paint a scenario for what we're going to get into today. So you and your husband kind of maybe haven't had sex for a little while and you're in the mood and things are right this time. Things are right. And you've got the lights dim, you're romantic, you've got the nice new lingerie on and you're hot and heavy and getting into it. And you're like really busting out and you can't stop but bing! The door opens and your two-year-old comes in and goes, Mom, I can't sleep! What do you do? Gosh, are we going to talk about parenting and sex? So welcome us. Welcome, welcome. Join us right now. I've got the brilliant Dr. Alana oh Coffey here. <laughs> Hi, Alana. Hi. Thank you for coming. Sure. So from the Hawaii Psychology Collective, I know you have a group of fantastic and talented therapists. Thank but you. what is your specialty and why, why do you think right, this topic right. is so relevant? Um, my specialty started out with children, okay. and then um, I sort of progressed into working with parents um, and doing family and couples work. And I would say that's probably 60% mm, of the work that I do is a whole family in some configuration. And this is a big topic that the parents come in with. I mean, they are, um, <clears throat> excuse me, somewhat neglecting that part of their lives. Right. So they come in and, um, and talk about it in therapy. So They come together? Relevant. No, sometimes I come one at a time and I'm like, you need to get the other half in here. But, you know, and sometimes they come in with such a, um, an, an issue that is so irrelevant to the actual problem. They have to meander to the ah, actual issue. It's right. you know, a lot of shame and embarrassment. Yeah, sure. So. I mean, you said you talk to a lot of different people and hearing their stories. Is there some kind of a common thread, though, with these parenting sex lives? So the men will say that um, marriage is like something like an anti-sex. As soon as you get married, oh, you don't have sex anymore. They're so horrible. pessimistic, those guys. Um, and the women, for them, it's the kids. I mean, yeah. like, you know, nursing and changing diapers are very not sexy. So, yes. I mean, the first six years are a challenge, I would yeah. say, to most couples. And, and there are those exceptions, so I don't right. want to um, generalize too much. There's some people that um, seem to ma manage, but there are always exceptions, right? Yeah. But let's let's go start from the um, beginning. For people who are new parents, um, you know, coming home after a deflated body and um, and and swelling boobs and sleepless nights, something that's just been so foreign, you know, from yeah. before when you're a queen. Oh, totally. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I mean, just what does that do to you mentally before so you even get to the physiologically, physical? right? The yeah. changes that happen in women, um, chemical and structural. Right. I mean, like, I'll never forget my two-year-old did a zerber on my stomach. That's, That's when zerber. you blow the tummy and it makes sort of like oh. a <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> And, his, you know, I'm like, that is so, talk about <laughs> deflating, I'm like, don't do that anymore. And, um, so, and then, you know, there's just a lot of changes yeah. that happen. And, and we women being able to reconcile the changes in our body and still feeling really sexy and pretty with those changes. That's hard. I remember my first birth and, after, and just going, getting up from a toilet and seeing this extra flappy skin. <laughs> It's like, what the heck, man? Can we talk about this yeah, on TV? Yeah, please. Oh, I mean, it <laughs> is graphic, but it's real and in your face. And yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah. Men should know that it's not our choice to have this kind of body. And it's like, wow. Well, we do that so they can have their children. Yeah, this is <laughs> yeah, like, thank you. no complaint. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So I discovered the control top thong at that point. Yeah, I think <laughs> is that where they I make them, yeah. <laughs> well, you know, I was in Hong Kong at the time, and they tell us to buy those big wrap things to kind of shrink your stomach down oh, earlier. Wow, so you have yeah. this kind of a girdly thing yeah, that yeah, brings yeah. it in faster. Well, so I had twins yeah. and um, they combined were 15 pounds. They were just these <gasps> enormous children. Um, they were C-section yeah. and I think the C-section is a different type of recovery yes. even, right? Because then they're, the stomach muscles are compromised. It's like split open, isn't it? It is split open. So I'm lobbying right now for some sort of liposuction or some such thing because <laughs> there's not enough sit-ups that I can do. Right. Like, yeah. Remember? I mean, you have to like bring in the muscles, yeah, oh all gosh, the Pilates. Yeah. 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 Okay. So that's the, you know, physical aspect. Right. That's one of them. I'm one of the many, many, and we didn't even talk about the sore nipples. You know? Oh wow! Yeah, yeah. that we can really talk <laughs> about that. Yeah. So Please. there's this like cream that you put on there to, to prevent What's the that cracking. New Zealand kind of Atlanta Atlanta yeah, yeah. yeah, I you know repressed a lot of this because it what? was traumatizing at the time. Did um, you? Yeah, I nursed. Did you? How do you nurse twins? Do you do it so at the same time? It's the sort of double <laughs> football, their heads here, their bodies there. A few times you do that simultaneously just to shut them up and give them a little bit of nourishment at the same time. Yeah. It was crazy. Yeah. yeah. Do you remember when you felt sexy again after having 
birth? Well, yesterday, no, 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 I'm not going to say. 18 years later, 18, we're no. still looking. But, um, no, I don't remember that. It was probably all a blur. And so the adults have different types of libidos. I think women yeah. or men have different sure. libidos. And um, we're not necessarily always in sync. Yeah. Right? So there's this period of time when you're chasing him around, like, you know, I got a man. I'm ready. He's running, <laughs> right? Um, and there's other times when he's doing the chasing. So, you know, it's definitely much easier in the last third of my children's lives since they were 12. Okay, got a lot teenage easier. years, when they don't come in the room in the middle oh of the night. Oh, my gosh. Oh, they, these people, they'll follow you into the bathroom. They have no boundaries. Mom, mom, mom. Right. Um, so that's, that's a particular, you know, uh, phobia is having them walk in on. Who hasn't? Honestly, which parent has not had a kid? Come in the room I don't during know. sex. I, I don't, and they just feel traumatized. They will tell you it is like the it kids looks are traumatized. Like, yeah, it looks husband? it looks very it looks aggressive uh -huh. to them. I mean, you know, they're oh, why right. are you okay. doing that aggressive act that. to my right. mother? So right. they're actually it's really scary for them. Sometimes they're traumatized, and they they might come in and actually try to intervene oh, and right. break it up. And right. oh my gosh, what are you doing to my mom? Oh gosh, yeah, yeah. So, so where does that sex ed come in on those conversations then? Um. <laughs> Like, how what young can you? Well, we chose, um, you know, this is, depends on the family. Everybody has their yeah, values. Right. But um, we are educators and psychologists yeah. and, um, and social work. So we felt it really important to tell our children very early what the deal was. So over breakfast, you guys would be talking about when you're ovulating. Well, actually, it was after the movie Grease. And our <laughs> son said, Mom, so what is a 50-cent insurance policy? And then my <laughs> husband's like, you know, good time. Let's tell him what a condom is or prophylactic. I mean, it was like seven or eight years old. Right. Probably shouldn't have been watching Grease anyway. <laughs> but uh, then we had the whole story. What is a, a condom? And that, you know, it's a barrier method. Why do you need a barrier method? Well, it covers the penis. Well, why do you need to cover your penis? It just right. went on from there. But um, it gave us a vehicle to give them very factual scientific information. Right. And then yeah. from there, they elaborated greatly but at <laughs> least they had those basics and they're about eight i think that's really important did you see the movie Fan captain fantastic i did not well if you ever have a chance to get it i highly recommend that to anyone out there but there's this brilliant scene where the father the the little the one of the youngest kids goes well he heard the sister talking about intercourse from a book what's intercourse daddy she says well you know when the uh, husband i mean the man sticks the penis into the vagina what's a vagina well it's where it's uh, a woman's part down there um, I don't know what he said, but then she says, isn't that where you pee? She says, well, that's the urethra, it's right next to it. So he's really adamant on yes. giving it on, out, all out, right, yeah. where the sister was appalled by this conversation. Oh, my children so. were appalled, too. They are like, that's disgusting. I'm never going to do that. Right. I mean, right. they were that's just normal, like, ew, right? mom, I can't believe that. Yeah. yeah, you can't even talk about it. We can't talk about it. Even till today, actually, they'll cringe. If I like wink at my husband, they're like, oh my God, don't do that. You know? yeah. <laughs> well, okay, that's another thing though. How you show affection in front of kids, right, right, that right. will greatly um, influence how they will interact with their partners, right? Um, so we try to just be very respectful and nonviolent to each yeah. other. So, you know, there's definitely, um, I think I'm probably more physical than, than Jerry. So, you know, I would just show uh, my affection very physically and um, and that's to just about anyone. I'm yeah. you know, typically hugging and kissing people right. in, within vicinity. Um, wait till after the show, but I'm just saying, you know, <laughs> we're very tactile as a family. Yeah, well, how so. come you didn't hug me in the elevator? Then? I didn't know who you were. <laughs> but as soon as I knew. I mean, <laughs> okay. <laughs> but um, we're very tactile with that expression. You right, know, so. right. And so do you see that influencing them in how they... Yeah. So, uh, it, plus, I mean, as local children, I mean, they were ra born and raised here, right? So. One of the things that I greatly appreciate about that physical affection, it's not mm -hmm. sexual affection, it is just, it's physical and it's respectful. So they'll walk into a room and kiss all the aunties or uncles. Like there's some sort of physical connection. Right, so, yeah. Yeah, it's very normal it is for nice. us. Yeah, it is but, nice. Well, that's an interesting um, aspect, though, is how much culture uh, plays in uh, your sexual relationship mm -hmm. and, and how you define those boundaries between you and your kids. Because in Asia, you know, you don't even strip naked. God forbid you show any part of your body to your kids. You don't shower, you know. So... Um, <laughs> in the Western society, it's much more open, and so people are actually more comfortable with their bodies. Yes. And if they come in to see you in the shower, it's not a big deal. Right, right. No, it is not a big deal in our house. Um, I probably am about the most clothed person, but even then, you know, I mean, people are just 
little nymphs walking around our house. It's just comfortable that right. way. Um, and I, yeah, I don't know. We're just kind of comfortable. Right, and it should be. It's a natural thing. So mm -hmm. going back to sex with the kids around the house, there's got to be some ways. So um, <laughs> we tried to send them away. I mean, that's the most fun. Yeah, it, you know, like if my kids are camping or on a trip, don't come over because I'm finally gaining some right. long time with Jerry. But, um, and, and we have this one friend, a couple of friends, and uh, they would have us babysit the children and they would go away and they would come back at 10 o'clock and pick them up. I mean, like, and that's when their kids were very little. They were like two and three years old. So right. they needed to just have these sort of, well, basically sex dates. I mean, they would have right. to schedule it, make time for it. And that really is my recommendation to people, like, be deliberate. Do not expect these things to happen um, casually or spontaneously like they once did it when we were in our 20s. Way, it? No, it does not. So there's some planning that goes involved. Okay, but this planning, doesn't that kind of take away the whole feel of the moment? It can, unless you're playful with that even. I mean, then we yeah. introduce romance a little bit right. back to it. And it might feel contrived, but it's also very playful and fun. And as adults, we get to have that too. So, yeah. And then when people are in that moment, um, they reintroduce that magic between them and that chemistry. But the planning of it can be fun too. Well, that's the thing though. See, you know, like in my head, I always think, okay, this is going to be the romantic weekend. I'm going to do this and that. It's all in the head. It's so great. Mm -hmm. And then when the actual time comes, I'm exhausted from doing all this stuff with the kids. I don't want to put on that little piece of laundry because I feel, I feel stupid because right. I'm so comfortable in my t-shirt. Right. And right. nothing goes for it ever like what you want it to do. No, it doesn't. It <laughs> never comes out that way. But, um, but de I do definitely think that people should plan for these things. But um, our idea of romance and sexy is, has changed. So right. the garters that once were have given away to tube socks, you know, and that's like, <laughs> gotta just be sexy, you know? Okay, yeah, right, whatever works. <laughs> I have right. this one couple that I know, um, there's special panties that she puts on. So she still wears t-shirt, bottle bottle uh -huh. t-shirt with holes and everything in it, okay. but it's the panties that Was it signal, edible or something? No they're, no, they're just the same ones every time. And, you know, the, the only time she wears them is when it's sort of like, like raise the red lantern. Yeah, yeah. Like, it's kind of like that. Oh, that's yeah, kind of cool. I have a friend who, what she does is she will um, pick out different sets of lingerie and um, she'll take photos of it on her phone and when her husband's at work, he'll give She'll give him a choice of which one she want, he wants that's that night nice. to look forward to. Oh, that I think that's so quite cute, sweet. isn't it? Yeah, it Yeah, is. so when you say playful, I thought of that. So there are lots of ideas we yeah. can think of to plan and to present opportunities. So we need to make that effort. Let's take a quick break and we'll come back and talk a little bit more and, you know, incite that little creativity behind our dormant minds and bring out that sexuality. This is Steve Katz. I'm a marriage and family therapist, and I do shrink wrap, which is now going to every other week, all during the summer and maybe forever after. Take care of your mental health this summer. Have a good time. Do what's fun and take good care of yourself. Bye-bye. Aloha. My name is Danelia, D-A-N-E-L-I-A. -E and I'm the other half of the duo, John Newman. Welcome. We are co-hosts of a show called Keys to Success, which is live on the Think Tech Live Network series, weekly on Thursdays at 11 a.m. We're looking forward to seeing you then. Aloha! Aloha! I'm Chantal Seville, host of the Savvy Chick Show on Think Tech Hawaii, and I'm going on tour. I'm taking you around the world. We're going to Canada, and then we're going to, well, we're in America, then we're going to San Francisco. So keep staying tuned. 11 a.m. every Wednesday on the Savvy Chick Show. We'll see you next time. Yeah, when we come okay. Back. Back on Quack Talk, oh. and, and I'm talking to Dr. Alana Coffey about parenting and sex and how you deal with those awkward situations when you're hot and heavy, when you do, and you're lucky enough to get some, and they walk in. Of course, it's always like that, right? It's always like that. They never walk in when you're like... Watching <laughs> television, right. running your own business, yeah. Exactly. So I was thinking of one um, occasion where I was... Uh, well, suggesting some things to my mate and um, trying to explain to him why it would be a really good idea if he 
gave in. And um, <clears throat> I was no longer visual to the child that came into the room oh, okay. that stood there and began to have a conversation with said father about some such thing. And so I had to just be very, very still <laughs> until this <laughs> child went away. And we're at, like, Potagi and chocolate, so we're very talky. Right. It kind of took a long time. I'm like, right. shut that kid up and send <laughs> him on the... the hell out of Yeah, you. yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, you know, little things like that. And there must be some funny <laughs> little moments, right? I mean, you, when you have to all of a sudden hold in it's your like, breath. And just hold on, be still. <laughs> yeah. But then it's hard to continue <clears throat> afterwards too when you have that break, right? Depends on where you are in the situation. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> depends, it depends. And, and I think, you know, some of the um, couples, I ask them, like, what's a normal frequency? And right. this, this differs oh, that's a generationally. Question. Well, I think. So the older generation, like maybe our parents, you know, who are in their 60s, 70s, for them, um, they weren't really confused about this. They felt like there were boundaries between parents and kids, and the kids stayed, did not come in their room, right. or they knocked before coming in their room. Yeah. And it was, you know, the, co parent, the couple centric and the children followed the couple right but then my generation came about and Open we like doors. turned it upside down and yeah. it's child-centered right and children first and we don't matter and I think huh. that trend had gone too far it's, yeah, it's actually maybe so. kind of damaged some relationships Absolutely. we're so involved in what's happening with the children we forget our mate oh big time yeah so coming you know that pendulum swinging back to center is actually really good so you have to you suggest creating boundaries and and really sticking to it and not letting him you know your 10 year old sleep in your bed still I mean oh wow 13 years old really even. yeah it's really something and I actually kind of got into a little bit of a debate with that mom and it was like um, that's just the way I'm doing it and I'm like whoa um, when you think developmentally what's happening with a child right. that's 10 to 12 13 and this was a male child um, you know, that's not good for no, either okay. development. Right. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if you can think back or remember when you were a kid, did you ever walk into your parents or did you ever have that situation where you knew something was going on? So I walked in on my girlfriend's parents. What? Yeah, <laughs> and we were just, and she and I were do, 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 and I was like, and I, you know, I'm oh. curious. That's why I'm a psychologist. Right. I'm like, what's happening here? By the time I actually... Wait, how old like, were you? I was about five. Oh, that yeah, young. Yeah, I was okay. very young. So um, I just... What it, but what I saw, it looked very loving. It uh -huh. wasn't scary okay. or anything. Okay. And I wasn't, like, edged out or anything. I was just right. like, oh, that's interesting. So Was just, it all out in the open? Like, they were naked yeah, and much, it was not under the sheets? Pretty much. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Went blind for a couple hours. No, no, no. <laughs> <Yeah>. But... <laughs> <laughs> too much yeah, info. Yeah, but um, I just, re I was not, um, it was not gross to me. I remember just thinking, oh, okay. that's interesting. Yeah. But that's interesting that you remember that so vividly. Oh, yeah. oh very vividly, yeah. And did you go home and tell your mom? No. Oh. That I knew was taboo. And because I didn't want my friend to be scolded or that her parents would be scolded. Right. So I knew that, like, we know that there's certain levels of taboo, and I knew that I should not tell what I saw. Right. Yeah. But it's interesting when a kid does know what's going on next door, is what goes through their head and do you even follow on that conversation? So we painted our bedroom doors red. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, absolutely. There's a lot of humor in our house, you know, a lot of humor. So it's like these doors are closed for a reason, which, you know, they're mostly always open to them. So we don't have the kind of bedroom that you can't just come in unless those doors are closed. Ah, and they're like, it's like putting the tie on the door. Yeah, it is. Door, and, right? and it's because I have sons, I think they um, are actually really respectful of that space because they are just grossed out by it. <laughs> right. Like, we don't want to like, know. Like, moms don't have yeah, sex. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah, so. Well, but, you know, just in different phases, too. I mean, are there developmental phases where parents have to reassess how they kind of keep, you know, obviously the older you are, the fire kind of dims out after yeah. a while, after yeah, you've yeah. been married. How do you keep that going, even if they're not coming in the room? That's not your excuse anymore, right, you know? Right, right. Um, having a really good relationship with your partner actually matters because yeah. what happens later on, let's talk about men for a minute. Okay. Um, we used to think that they would have sex no matter what, under what condition, they would just go for it. And that's not necessarily so. They um, get hurt, they get discouraged, they get tired. There's a lot of pressure on adults to, I don't know, pay the rent, the mortgage, yeah, do this, sure. that. So because they have so much external pressure, um, when they come home or when we're with each other, the more respectful and loving it can be, the better. Mm -hmm. But um, but when the men are tired or angry or upset, yeah. they actually withhold sex right. in a way that's really surprising to women. 
women are used to being able to get at that. Mm. And so uh, maintaining a healthy relationship is actually really good for sex life. So in that kind of situation, do you suggest the women to be a little more proactive in softening those edges or to just let it you know, pan out? Com combination, sometimes they need space, but um, we can be very demanding in our tasks yeah. because when we are threatened or insecure or you know, we have the same pressures like, you know, where's the money, where's the security, yeah, where's this, why didn't sure. you do your share of the chores? So we tend to press, 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 yeah, yeah. and then they withdraw, withdraw, and right. then that stops happening. And then the and intimacy, then the bedroom, yep, it transfers yeah, it over. Goes, yeah, it goes down. So, um, I, you know, I never thought I would be saying this, but to a certain extent, we females can, we should soften a little bit. Yeah. You know, I agree, and I can't. See, I can't find myself doing it either. I, I know that's the thing I should do, and it's really hard. Totally, it's so hard. I find myself yeah. just writing it down. I'm like, okay, I'm going to write this down. And I'm going to say it tomorrow morning, <laughs> <laughs> or right. something, right. Um, because um, we're running households. We're actually very busy today in 2016. So there's a lot on our plate collectively. Yeah. We raise children. We raise households. Um, but we must keep that piece together. And another little thing I have to, I just really wanted to spend some time with, and that's the, um, the issue of work, workplace friendships and mm -hmm. romances, because we get so close to the people we work with. Right. And um, to be cautious of those kinds of relationships, because huh. our work is such a strong part of our identity and our narrative and our personality. And sometimes we're really vibing with a person at work right. psychologically. Just kind of beware of that. Huh. Yeah, yeah. I kind of know where you're going with that. Um, but sometimes, you know, it's that energy, and it's also because it's not your family yeah. that things get a little more exciting, yeah. even if yeah, it's yeah, just yeah. harmless flirting. Right. So, um, you know, in these kind of dang potentially dangerous kind of situations, would you suggest more conversations about work when they come home? Or, you know, it's so hard not to talk about the kids when you get home, and right, it right, it's right. really becomes very boring. But. Well, I think that talking about our work is really important with our spouse yeah. because these are the goodies that we bring home to the nest. It's like this interesting thing happened. And when I say talk about it, I don't mean grumble about it. Yeah. Right? So we talk about it, we share our exciting projects and things that we do with each other, make time for each other, um, and invite one another into the other's world as opposed to keeping it really isolated and separate. But for your case, both of you are therapists, so do you actually share cases and actually try to, is that a little too kind It's just too much, yeah. yeah, too much. There are cases that we share, so we'll get consent. Even then, even though we're who we are, we still get consent from our people to talk about it. But right. what we will do is we ask for advice you know, like, if this is a situation, what would you do? And I'm typically really surprised by my husband because what he says to do for his clients is not necessarily what either of us do at home. You know, we're ah. still human beings and right. we do all the things we tell you not to do as our clients. We're like, please don't do that. <laughs> well, do you, I mean, do you have that issue being, you know, over analyzing everything, just habit of your work? that when you go home, yeah, you yeah, kind yeah. of self-critique too much, do you Jerry think? Jerry uh, psychoanalyzes me more than I do him. Do you Although, hate it when he does that? Yes, I'm like, stop Junior freuding me. But, <laughs> he, you know, but I think he would probably disagree. But th what I value is his words. He has great communication skills as a result of the work we do. Mm. But it doesn't mean that we are, you know, flawless. We right. definitely have. But know. sometimes you need to hear these things, right? Sometimes you need to hear from someone what you're not doing or what it would be nice to be doing. Yeah, it's always shocking. It's like, really? You're giving me feedback? <laughs> <laughs> are you sure? I want examples. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, also because when you're dating and courting, guys will make so much effort to communicate with you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And or afterwards, they overlook things. Or, like, yeah, that yeah, doesn't yeah, matter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then later, they're like, they that all matters. Comes out. Yeah, right. Yeah. So, um, how do you keep the fire burning in that way then? I mean, you know, guys aren't good for words. Not everybody's like your husband. Good for and, words, yeah. You know, w what are some tips or tricks to kind of keep things going? Assuming that your relationship okay. is healthy. Yeah, right. So first, get that relationship healthy. Yeah. I mean, that's what, counselor, of course, saying please take care of that part, the interest part. Um, second, make time. Make the effort, make the time. And um, remember the platinum rule, which is very different than the golden rule. So the golden rule is I treat you in the way that you want to be treated, uh -huh. right? So it would, it'd be like, I treat you the way I would want to be treated. The platinum rule is I treat you in the way that you would prefer to be treated, not based on what I would like. Oh. So if I know that you're someone that likes flowers, but I'm someone that likes foot massages, I should not give you a foot massage, right? You would not right. appreciate it. You'd right. be like, 
And then I would be feeling taken for granted or not appreciated because you didn't go, ooh, a foot massage. Right. When to me, a foot massage is the most important thing. So I please be mindful of what each other prefers in all ways and not just sexual ways, but it's not what you want, but what the other wants. And then if you look to each other, your needs will be met, actually. That's a very good point. And yeah. you can translate that into um, parenting your kids, too, in terms of how they should be looking at how you deal with other people. Right. It's not just what you want. Right, right. And I think that um, there's this great image of the spoon's too long and you, the person cannot get it in the soup into their mouth because the spoon's too long. Uh -huh. The spoon is, and it, they're in a circle, and everybody has this really too long spoon, and they just feed each other, and that way everybody gets their needs met. Huh. Yeah, so it's kind of a... That's an interesting analogy. Yeah. And Well, I'm thinking back to that film that I highly recommended, Captain Fantastic. Is there a scene when the father sends off his son, his teenage son, he's going to be leaving, he just graduated, and he's going to go to... Um, I don't know, Africa to roam around the world for a little while. And his tip for women, you know, he's looking at him and he says, when you make love to a woman, remember to listen to her. Mm. It's just such a beautiful mm. advice from a father. Mm -hmm. Wow, that is. I mean, nobody, okay. uh, forget the parent-child thing. Nobody really listens to each other anymore. Yeah, yeah. And not just listen to their words. Yeah. There's so much happening physiologically. So this is a part where um, the boys are 18, yeah. and we do have these conversations. And so the bigger picture was please be respectful to your partners. Right. Just always be really respectful to your partners. Okay, mom. I'm like, oh gosh, I should give more detail, you know. So some of that is listen, make sure their body is healthy, make sure they're comfortable and feeling safe. That's a very difficult conversation to prep your child mm. to possibly be having sex with someone. But since we know statistically they're going to, yeah. uh, making sure that they're safe emotionally and physically is really important. <clears throat> wow. So there's never too, well, I guess there's a time when you know it's right to have that conversation, yeah. but a very important one. And then they come and go, so what about this? And they want to yeah. give you these details. I'm like, that's the time. And it's like, go ask your father. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, use that do. line. Go ask your yeah. dad. <laughs> yeah. I love it, though. But that's why you balance everything with, with a healthy couple. Alana, I mean, there are so many things we could talk about, but I'm really glad we opened up a lot of great tips and issues about parenting. But I want to talk about the razor roof. Now, that's coming up. Great. It has nothing to do with having sex, but you can have <laughs> sex after the show. But tell us a little bit about this. OK, so razor roof is the arts at Mark's Garage, it's their 15th year um, of providing space in downtown Honolulu for visual artists, performance artists. It is an amazing jewel downtown, and this is their biggest friends fundraiser they've ever had. And th it's going to be on the roof of downtown Honolulu, which is also very gorgeous. It's a Saturday night, November 19th, um, and the tickets are all included, food, music. Um, we've got some great speakers. Um, Enos is coming. Um, and Tamane, do you know Tamane? No, that? I oh my gosh, that she's so talented. Yeah? Okay. And she'll be there that night. I mean, we just have some really great talent. That's great. Art will be for sale. And um, it's one of my pet projects, which is another thing that happens for couples, is when uh -huh. we get established and those kids are kind of raised already, yes. we all start taking um, more activity in the community. Right. And being part of that community and bringing that energy. Yes. And and all of that enthusiasm back home. So Absolutely. this is one of my pet projects. Right well, now. good luck. Yeah. That's, congratulations on that. And that healthy energy translates to your energy here and probably Thank into you. the bedroom. So again, remember, remember, enjoy your partner. Be nice to them and, yeah. and enjoy sex. And forget about the kids. They'll grow up and get out of there <laughs> eventually. <laughs>